So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have Jonathan here with me and uh, he has been on several other um, YouTube channels as well. Would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, my name is Jonathan. I have been on the Ben Vaseline channel and occasionally on the Pukoki channel. You've had her on. I have studied uh, typology for the last five or six years, I would say. Uh, I have known about Myers Briggs for a very long time, but I never really got into it until like six years ago when I started. I'd taken the test several times over the years and I didn't think much of it. Uh, but I always got INFP or INFJ. And eventually, for some reason, I got very annoyed one day and I went uh, on the internet and looked up for any proof about it. And that's how I went about the call to functions. And that's how I got really into it. And while I was looking up that stuff, I went to the forum personality cafe and they were talking about that. They're also talking about Enneagram and socioronics and all these other strange things that I never heard of. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting really into them as well. And sometime after that, I joined the channel Ben Vassal and I was brought on because I knew a bit about Enneagram by that point. And I've been there ever since. I've been talking a lot about that. I have also uh, been on a couple of other YouTube channels, as I mentioned, Pukoki. And I'm currently studying with Catherine Favre, who developed uh, tri-type theory and instinctual stackings and a whole bunch of other important aspects of the Enneagram. <coughs> and I am certifying with her, which hopefully will be in a few months. So that's been a very intense four-year course. Uh, wow. And I, oh yeah, so it's quite different from other training courses, which usually last a few months. If, if yeah, not. that's really long. Is, um, yeah. I, I heard that you're also interested in becoming like a full-time practitioner or something, like in yeah. Enneagram. I am not sure what I'm going to do with it. The main reason I'm studying it is because I really like it and I really enjoy it. So whatever yeah. I do with it, uh, it's just like it's one of those things where you just like you're meant to be there. Mm -hmm. That's what it really feels like. So yeah, so in the classes we study uh, enneagram types, uh, tri type instincts, uh, empath different styles of empathy, word choices of the Enneagram styles, micro expressions, facial archetypes, all kinds of things. So, and how to interview people and all these things. So, so yeah, I am, I consider myself the great, the top Enneagram expert in Scotland. And that's a joke yeah. because there's no one who knows the Enneagram in Scotland, as far as I know. But, Oh, so it's like more of an American and a UK thing, right? From what I heard. Yeah, I don't yeah. even. Well, Scotland isn't the UK. I, I don't. I don't know how popular it is there in England either. I think there's some more people talking about it in England, but it is mostly in America and parts of Asia and other parts. I don't think I know. I know almost no one who knows about it in Scotland and. Uh, even those who do, I don't think they're that versed in it, and they're on the other side of the country. So, I am all alone. <laughs> yes, you have like the online friends. Yes, you can talk about this. So, um, actually, this concept is also not that well known in Asia, and I think I talked about it in my other videos. But the reason I like the concept, um, I mean, in in terms of personality types in general, is that I feel like. There is this lack of individuality, this lack of understanding about people's differences in personality in Asia, um, because we are brought up in a more, um, I guess, like maybe our parents' generation are brought up in a more um, like um, group-oriented culture because of the mm -hmm. reason, because, you know, in the past, they used to have many kids and it's difficult for them to focus on the individual. But I feel like there's this shift of like also looking at an individual. And I think that personality type is like a way to help us understand how we are different um, and also how we can come together. So it's like both the individual and how we can fit into the group, but not in a way that it's forcing people to be the same. It's more like, um, like we can learn to better 
interact with people as they mm-hmm. are rather than like forcing people to be a certain way, I guess. Um, so, you know, back to the anagram topic. So you are a uh, one wing nine. Um, Correct. So I'm not sure like, um, find, wait, sorry. There's a, a little bit of a glitch. Okay. How do you find out about your type? Because when I'm doing the t- test, sometimes I get different results. Um, I get like four wing five or five wing four, depending on the day and, and the type of test. So um, how, how do you, how um, do you know for sure, or at least on a more um, certain level that you are a one wing nine? Well, same with Myers Briggs. I took some tests. I got different results. I also got five wing four and four wing five a lot. Uh, and I thought I was one of those types, but I was not satisfied with what I was getting because there wasn't enough information. As I say, just to go out and buy some books. So I bought two books by a teacher called Herb Pierce. And I read up on the four and the five, and I resonated with both somewhat. Uh, I recognized the five as far as I was reading through the five, and I recognized a lot of the thoughts I had right there on, on the page since I was like a teenager. Uh, and after that, though, I decided to learn about all the other types to get familiar with them. And when I read the one, that was thoughts I'd had for as long as I can remember, right there on the page. And the one wing nine is described as somewhat five-ish, so I could see how I could get that kind of result. Uh, and the one has a line to four. So if you see the Enneagram map, it has the line to four and the line to seven uh so i can somewhat explain how i could relate to the four and i would get more into depth that later so that's how i originally decided that i was a one and the more and more i learned about the other enneagram types and the more books i read and the more videos i watched and the more i talked with experts on the subject more and more the one was right the one, uh, the words I was using, the way I was thinking, and versus the way other people were thinking, uh, it all made a lot more sense to me. Like the the uh, the judgmentalness of the one, the ethics, the moral righteousness, the objectivity, all these things are things that I value or think about all the time, pretty much every day. Right. So, <coughs> so how does um because I I don't um I don't have an anagram one in my stacking I mean my anagram type. So how does a uh, anagram one um uh, traits um feature into your everyday life like in terms of maybe career wise because I I know that anagram has been used very often for career guidance mm-hmm. uh, and also in terms of like maybe your own personal um values. Like, how does NRM one factor into that? Okay, so it can and it does get used for jobs. It has not really affected my career so much, except in terms of what I avoid. Uh, I have learned about tri-type theory, so I do have five in my tri-type, and that makes me a bit more private. Uh, The one is kind of private as well, because the one's sort of picky with who you want to spend time with. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was a very shy child and very much didn't quite fit in uh, as far as my current career uh, it doesn't have much to do with anything except that it gives me a lot of alone time and uh, I do my job and then I spend a lot of time just reading and studying <coughs> uh, I am drawn to things like charity work and so on, but I'm a bit put off by this sort of bureaucracy kind of yeah. thing. I mean, I think the INFJ thing, because we don't have the TE, <coughs> um, you know, function. Well, even, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, even though INFJs can be a little bit, if you're a type one and you're not an INFJ, you have a bit put off if it's too much office work and not enough meaningful, helpful work right. or doing the right thing. That's an important thing to anyone. Uh, so, yeah, so having the one wing nine uh, makes me more a withdrawn one. Uh, 
it's more in terms of my everyday life as far as like how I interact with people and the sort of things I talk about and write about and uh, like correcting people on the internet can be a well, it's not a bad habit but it's how you do it as well uh, and like the exact language used and the importance of getting it right and being accurate uh, all those things. So the way I talk to people in the day, the way I talk to people in day to day life, that's more how my one shows up. And the way I relate to people. So type one is also known as um, the reformer in some anagram websites, and it has this basic desire of having integrity to be good, um, and a fear of being corrupt or defective, and it has like a sense of mission. Um, I'm wondering, do you encounter, what kind of uh, challenges do you encounter as a result of um, having this this dominant, I guess, anagram type? Mm. Main challenge for me is, uh, well, first the procrastination, because if I want to do something, like write, write something, for example, sometimes I can procrastinate a huge amount because I want to get it right. And I want to get it right before I even get started. It's like I want to know what I'm going to write. Uh, and I'll think about it a lot. And then I can have trouble sitting down because it's almost like it's been finished in my head. Uh, so there's a lot of mental energy going on with with the one. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it can also affect like a lot of things like food for example could be an issue if you're very the one's a very picky sort of person uh and the type of relationships you have like if i meet someone i'm almost unconsciously just quietly judging all things like their clothes and their habits and their word choices and all these things that other people find very rude if i ever actually said it but uh <clears throat> That and the desire for privacy are probably the biggest challenges for me, personally. That's what, what I'd say. The, right. Uh, what about the wing nine part? Because I heard that um, a lot of wing nine or any Enneagram nine person, um, one common like challenge that I hear is that they have like people pleasing tendencies as a result of hmm. wanting to make peace. And I'm not sure if that's something that you also deal with. I mean, both as an INFJ and an anagram, you know, nine. Um, hmm. I would say that people pleasing is a bit more of the two ish thing. The nine can be people pleasing. Right. But, uh, sure. but there are there are nines that do not come off as people pleasing, like a self present nine wing eight. Uh, that's like quickly sweet stuff, or my dad. Uh, they're not necessarily going to come off as people pleasing. Like they'll do it, but they'll be more grumbly. Mm -hmm. uh, the one, anyone, one wing nine, one wing two, will want to be kind. They want to do the right thing. It's a matter of uh, those seen the one wing nine and the one wing two is the one wing two is much more of an activist and a crusader. Even if they're an introvert, they're more of an extroverted introvert. They're out there. They're yeah. doing things. The one wing nine is thinking, or F E um, look uh, like F E type of things that's what i notice in tattoos anyway yeah it can be uh the one way nine is trying to be more objective they're both trying to be objective but the one way nine is more objective because the one way nine feels like they have less energy and they're more concerned with establishing peace in order to get to the right thing and that's the difference between a nine wing one and a one wing nine the one wing nine is wanting the peace to be get things right whereas the nine wing one is one to get things right in order for there to be peace. <coughs> if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. So, so, yeah. Um, so if I break, uh huh. Um, uh, oh, yeah, I was going to say the process of like, right. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, in the process of trying to establish peace, um, I guess like because Enneagram 9 is more of a mediator type of role, right? And um, in the process of trying to establish peace, is there uh, some 
uh, situations where it's difficult to maybe upset the person um, or do you find it difficult to um, do something that like for example in, the, in terms of setting boundaries like sometimes you need to you may upset the other person or you may disrupt the peace in some way is that something like that is challenging for you or is not really a thing it is a thing and I do consider it at the same time depending on how you just assess the situation almost subconsciously and instinctively I'll try and gauge how will this person react to this and what's the situation uh, and perhaps how well do I know this person uh, is this socially appropriate that sort of thing so if it's something that's really important and I'll say about it I'm more likely to say something uh, if it's I'm not necessarily it's not my priority to keep the peace I want to keep the peace but it's not really my priority uh, at the same time I don't want to like upset the situation for no good reason or if it's not good of any long-term benefit or if it just makes the situation worse whereas other types like a, a chiropractic six or some eights or some more aggressive fours they won't care as much they'll want to have they'll want to say something to be more reactive they won't care so much about rocking the boat whereas me i'm trying to uh be as good as possible the other thing is the one the eight nine the one they all have issues with anger, but none of them see themselves as an angry person. Mm -hmm. The eight is okay with being angry. The eight is okay with expressing anger. Yeah. And they're thinking that when they get angry, they get over it, and then they forget about it. The nine and the one do not like being angry. The nine doesn't want to get angry, nor to keep, not just the peace in general, but also their own sense of peace, their own sense of, their own sense of calm and serenity. The one, though, thinks that, being angry can be morally wrong and corruptive. It's almost like a Jedi thing. It's the the sense of it can ruin. And I've always had this sense. This sense that being angry might feel good and it can feel empowering and so on to have righteous indignation and so on. But uh, it can also mess with your judgment and can easily fall into traps of being cruel. And uh, you can lose sight of what's important. So the one is every time the one has a negative emotion like that, like anger, whatever, there's this inner checkpoint that says stop. No, what's your business? So it's like the anger just rises up, and says no, stop. But sometimes it leaks out. Uh, but that's what's going on in my head. That sense of uh, the anger will come. I'll have this instinctive reaction, and then. I'll have to decide, do I say something or do I not? Sometimes I can't help myself. Uh, and I can't say I've always get the piece. I do find I'm a lot more forthright than nines, for example. Uh, whereas nines with this sort of stubbornness. My nines will say something, and if they get pushed back, they just stay at it rather than fighting back. Whereas me, I'm more likely to go forward and correct people and push back it's a little hard to articulate without going really in depth but that's sort of how it goes right so um how so like i guess maybe going back to what we previously discussed like when it comes to anagram nine or at least being paired up with one um would you say like you have any maybe like certain things that are more challenging for you as a result of this anagram type like certain situations or or maybe certain emotions or um yeah what i find most challenging is uh this is probably more of a me thing than necessarily a one, all ones. I do find socializing a bit challenging. I do, I have been diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum. That's part of it as well. Uh, and that's, again, bringing my tri type with the one with five. I just need a lot of alone time and I'm very uncomfortable with who I spend 
picky with who I spend time with and what we do. Like I remember being at school and uh, all the other kids were, were comfortable like swearing, some would smoke, some would watch, you know, films and TV shows that they were too young for. And I would like, uh, and that was the sort of thing that I had. I remember in our final year of primary school, which is like uh, 11 years old in Scotland, all the kids were going to see this Adam Sandler film, The Wedding Singer. I just show my age there. Uh, and I didn't want to see it because I thought it was... This didn't... I didn't really want to do it. And I didn't feel very comfortable doing it. Now that I know more about Adam Sandler, I think I still have the moral high ground there. Uh, but uh, that's the sort of thing that would happen. Like, just, like, what kind of things other people want to do versus what I want to do and what I think is the right thing to do. It's not always going to match up. And in that case, is it's very hard for me. Even if I go along with it, I won't feel comfortable and eventually I'll have to pull back. This can also happen when it comes to uh, more moralistic things like not necessarily, not necessarily activism, even just talking about things on the internet, whatever. Uh, we'll all maybe outraged about the same moral issues and injustices, whatever. But the way I will want to talk about it and the way I will want to approach and deal with it is a lot more, from my point of view, it's a lot more in-depth and objective and fair and balanced than what other people are doing. A lot of people just fall in much more easily into tribalism or being judgmental or not judgmental enough. Uh, and that can cause certain clashes. For me, from my point of view, it looks like they're being uh, half-hearted about it, or they're more interested in being angry about something or they're more interested in being what they're more worked about one particular issue rather than seeing the big picture and how all these things come together uh, and again that can cause problems with like relationships as far as uh, holding on to anything long term or it's almost like there's a certain wall between me and everyone else Right, sorry. I'm um, I'm just gonna hear. Uh, tell my parents to lower it down the volume. <laughs> okay. Now oh, they're watching TV. Okay, no problem. I don't know if you can hear it, but it was really loud just I now. Hear, I could hear it a little bit. A little bit. A little but bit. It yes. Okay. Great. It doesn't. It doesn't fit. No. Okay, but it's just for me, I guess. It was really loud in the, like, right outside the door. Um, yeah, like, I would imagine because for Anagram 1, you have, like, this this sense of purpose and you want to, like, reform things. And I guess that's also connected to the INFJ, but it's, like, enhanced by your Anagram type. Um, but I'm interested in you saying that you don't like the idea of tribalism and... Um, you you try to like approach issues on a more from a more like whole picture point of view. So can you give more um, maybe insights into how you think like tribalism may affect the way that people um, view issues and how maybe that can also uh, almost become an obstacle um, from getting things solved i guess or i don't know yeah uh, that's i can um, agree with as well one thing i've come to learn is that from their point of view they don't see it as an obstacle to getting things solved they see it as actually helping getting things solved because they're being yeah, spoken yeah. about things they're being they're fighting against these particular injustices very often they have seen me and someone else is that another person is much more comfortable fighting for things that personally affect them or make or that they have a personal stake in whereas whenever i come across this situation i hesitate even more because i'm afraid of <coughs> i'm afraid of it being reflecting bad in my integrity or my or making me selfish uh i'm always checking myself to see if what i'm 
being upset about if I'm doing it because it's wrong or if it's because it's wrong and it affects me. And that's that sort of and cause problems as well. Uh, it makes things very complicated if there is something that's genuinely wrong, but at the same time it does affect me because it's very easy to go into a personal attacks and say, oh, you're only caring about this because of that, blah, blah. Uh, basically, I try and, whenever possible, take a step back and look at how things interact, how are, I can see how, like, groups of people could be or convinced that the other side is just evil or stupid or short-sighted or whatever and that they or willful ignorant and when you look at the other side you can see that they're actually seeing things from a completely different perspective they're convinced that the other is exactly the same yeah uh, yeah obviously this is partly an INFJ thing as well but uh as far as uh how i do things differently the thing is i'm a type one but i'm also a social one the social one is sort of an oddity it's kind of like the the social types want to conform to a group they want to be part of the tribe uh but the social one is a lot more it's kind of like the pickiest of all the social types regarding what side they're going to pick and they're afraid of compromising their objectivity so there's certain uh Reformer is almost like a compromise, I, f I feel, because uh, there's a side of me that's very conservative and traditional. There's another side of me that's quite revolutionary and wants to upend the system. So Reformer is almost like that middle ground. Yeah. And I'm always, and I'm always trying to find the middle ground to stay objective and be correct, uh, which other types think, especially less patient types, think that's a complete waste of time. And it's not reflecting the reality. So other you have to keep in mind that other people do have reasons for how they're seeing things as well. And they're they're convinced that uh not being tribalistic is a bad thing. Sometimes also people can be very tribalistic while at the same time condemning tribalism. Like uh, those yeah. yeah, like saying and it's because that's a value of their tribe almost. But their tribe tells them that tribalism is bad and therefore they're not tribalistic. Uh, but those are the sorts of things that I keep thinking about and how I and the issues I come across. Yeah, um, I agree. I don't know if it's a anagram thing or it's, uh, maybe I'm just, you know, through my own um... well would you have used would you have used the words i used like would you have used words like correct and objective and uh things like that or would you have used something else yeah i think i would use something else but um like rational i don't know maybe it's the anagram five speaking on my um on my end but um yeah like i care a lot about being rational and i think a lot of people when they are when they are doing something um, that is supposed to be good for society, but they're doing it in a very, like, um, tribalistic, tribal um, way, it kind of, it, it kind of doesn't achieve the goal. It, it, it kind of is the opposite. They, they achieve the opposite of what they want. So it's, it's like, um, it's like I know a lot of people and I, I do see a lot of people trying to reform, but they kind of get the the result might not be what they want. It might be the opposite. And that's because they don't try to see things in an objective way, I guess. Because it's so easy to, to get to get sucked into the idea that, you know, um there is this like very, very clear um like group that is against you and there is like your side and you know it's it's easy to to kind of get into that mentality like the us versus them um but oftentimes that doesn't really work out 
um, it doesn't really work out a solution when people do yeah. that. There's like no solution. Yeah. What I find is that they think it does create a solution that they're doing it and they're, they're thinking long term as well. They're thinking this protest will work, it will work, it will work. If it doesn't work, then the next protest will work and, what, and so on. It will all build up over time. And so from their point of view, it's a matter of keeping the issue in the public eye and uh, staying angry about a certain thing and pushing, pushing, pushing. It's because uh, very often these are the Enneagram types that think they're coming, they see themselves as the underdog or they're protecting the underdog or whatever and they're looking up, like they're up against big, larger, more powerful forces and that justifies right. being Which is sometimes true. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I have been in those situations as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. The thing is, some the thing is, sometimes their opponents see exact things exactly the same way and see think see them as the big powerful forces, and they could take a lot of people like that could take a lot of pride in not backing down and uh, pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, uh, and they can look to history as well to see how people who they relate to and they, who they identify with were in similar situations and did that and eventually won out in the long term. So it is a thing I've had to learn that from their point of view, they are in fact making a difference, even though from another point of view, it's not so much that what they're doing doesn't work, it's that it's not necessarily the best way to go about things or the most straightforward. Sometimes it's uh, like they're fighting against the tide rather than finding a way around it or mm -hmm. finding a a boat or whatever i'm getting lost in this metaphor now uh, anyway yeah um so uh i guess like for the remaining time do you, do, would you like to maybe talk about the tri-type theory and how yeah. that um like affects our overall like Anagram. Okay. So tri-type theory was developed in the 80s and 90s, I think, by Catherine Favre, who is, as I said, she's my teacher. She's a very famous and prominent Enneagram teacher. Uh, she basically, she studied under various teachers and as part of her research and her studies, she uh, interviewed and typed a lot of people. And one of her methods was to pay attention to the word choices that people use because she noticed that certain types were drawn to certain words. Uh, I think other teachers may have thought that as well. But when she was doing it, she noticed that very often people were using words not associated with just one type, but with two or three different types. And those types tended to belong to the different Enneagram centers. So eight, nine, and one are part of what's called the gut center or the body center. Two, three, and four are part of what's called the heart center or the image center. Mm -hmm. And five, six, and seven are part of what's called the head center or thinking center. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, if you know Myers Briggs, it's basically like preference. It's like you have a preference in each center. Like we have all eight functions, but we prefer yeah. FBR, FIR, TATI. Same with this, you have all nine types, but you prefer the, the nine or one, or you prefer the two, three, or four, or you prefer the five, six, or seven. Uh, so you can be the same core type as another person, but you'll have a different tri-type and that will affect uh, how they present and how they go about things. Uh, so I'm a type one, but I'm a one, five, two specifically. Uh, that makes me quite different from a one, three, six, which would be much more out there and workaholic and works with loyalty and achievement. Uh, makes me different from a one, two, seven, which is more, again, a bit more uh, out there, a bit more fun loving. That could be fun. Uh, they're more, more playful, more trying to teach in a fun way. Uh, so, yeah, same with any other Enneagram type. So, if you meet someone who has the same tri type as you, you can usually get on with them quite easily. Uh, Whereas if you meet someone who has the same core type, a different tri type, it may be you understand each other, but you'll be all confused as well. So when you start to factor in that, and when you factor in also the instinctual stackings and the instinctual types, you can see that this system is way more complicated and sophisticated than it initially appears. 
uh, and especially when you factor in Myers Briggs as well. So it's not a case of there's just nine types, there's nine core types, and there's all these different kinds of variations that have to be accounted for. And it's go much further to explaining like the diversity of people in human psychology right so like how i mean i i'm a bit confused since i, I don't know about the tri-type thing but so like your tri-type is not um part of your um main anagram wing well the wings are I, a different the wings are a different thing so the wings are the Okay, so at the very beginning, when this was taught, there was just nine, the nine code types. And like all personality systems, or most systems, uh, the more teachers got into it, the more they noticed that even people who had identical types had clear differences. And then they developed all these different ideas to account for them, which are all somewhat true. Uh, so the wing theory is that... Uh, each type on the Enneagram is sandwiched between two other types. So the one is between the nine and the two, and the two is between the one and the nine, sorry, the one and the three, three between the two and the four, and so on. And so and the idea is that each type has two subtypes, two wing types, which borrow from each other. So you can have two type ones, but the one wing nine borrows from the nine, and the one wing two borrows from the two. There's also a theory that the types are created by the tension between these things, which is uh, another thing to consider. But the tri-type theory is rather that you have a preference in each of the different centers. So the gut center, the 8, 9, and 1, that's about anger and serenity. It's about conviction. It's about your inner strength. So how do you deal with anger as an individual? Do you try and, are you comfortable expressing anger or do you try and keep the peace for yourself or do you think anger is morally wrong? I'm asking you, how do you deal with anger? Oh, uh, I, it's complicated. Like, I express it sometimes. But mm. at, at a other times, but I don't do it like as much as the Enneagram 8 um, is known for. Like I express, I feel like it's necessary to express it. Um, but it also depends on the situation, like not too much because I feel like I used to express it a, a little or too much and it kind of. Oh. because it's very intense and so now i'm like i express it sometimes when when i feel like it's necessary i think it is necessary in some situations yeah hmm. and not like too much uh, hmm. yeah do you do you find it uncomfortable though do you find anger uncomfortable in general i would you rather not be angry if we was Mm -hmm. Sorry, connections. Sorry? Your yeah. connection was a bit weird. Yeah. Like, yeah, like I was asking, do you find anger, <clears throat> on average, do you find anger uncomfortable or do you find it? Uh, are you more likely to find anger uncomfortable or are you more likely to find it uh, corrupting and immoral? Uh... And not, just, not just now, but also how you were as a child. For as long as you've worked. Hmm. I. As so, so the two choices are if it's comfortable. Yeah, because because DINFJ is hardly ever heavy in the tri type, and I don't think you have it in the tri type. So, right. do you find do you find it? Uh, are you more worried about disrupting the peace, or are you more worried about corrupting yourself with anger? I think corrupting myself. Okay, that may indicate the one. So that would be different from a nine who's more worried about uh, the piece. And that would be true. That could be true regardless of whether the nine or the one is your core type. It can also be your tri-type. Right. Okay. Yeah, my yeah. tri-type. Because I, I remember 
I remember I did a test very long time ago that one of them was in my pie type somewhere. Like hmm. The one nine. I don't know which one it was, but yeah, yeah. yeah. it was in my tri type. So yeah, I didn't so, really look into it, so I didn't really know. Um, but yeah, yeah, I feel like anger. It, it depends on how it's expressed. Like when it's expressed in in ways that are very hurtful to other people, and it also like hurts ourselves. So it's kind of like the, you know, both. Hmm. Um, I guess you can say it can corrupt both. I don't know if that's the word. Um, yeah. But it can kind of lead to both inner and external damage. That's okay. like my, my, from what I see. Yeah. Yeah. Or do you go around thinking that people are right or wrong or nice or not nice? Um, I think nice or not nice. Okay. That can indicate more than nine again. Yeah, so obviously this is just nowhere near enough time to go into depth in this, but that's just an example of how right. uh, the sort of thing you're booking for with tri-type. Uh, then the two, three, and four, they are part of what's called the image center or the heart center. That's because they have to do with emotions and also have to do with the kind of image that people want to present uh, to the world. And the image they present will be about the kind of emotional feedback they want so the two wants to present an image of being a kind charitable helpful person they can be quite militantly helpful they can go out, of their, out of their way to be helpful uh very often enfjs and esfjs have r2s uh, yeah. and that can affect they'll try and they feel like they have an abundance of love and they're trying to avoid shame by being kind and helpful and so on. And the abundance of self-love, they feel like they have more than enough love to share with everyone. Whereas on the opposite end, you have the four, which feels like they have quite limited supplies of love and uh, they only have so much love to do. Being original, being unique, uh, that can affect the type of clothes each type wears as well. Like the four will be more concerned with like wearing something that's unique or vintage or rare. Uh, whereas the three, which is more like the neutral, what the emotionally neutral thing, they work say with em uh, success and efficiency. They may be more attracted to the brand clothes, what's popular. They want to look the best. They want people to see them as the best. Uh, and the yeah, two yeah. more the positive dress sense on. So all these things will be going on in the set in the heads of the heart types. And depending on where your heart type is in your tri-type stacking, uh, that can be important as well. So like for me, I'm a one five two, so my two is last. So I have the two in there and it's I am thinking two things, but it's not as much of a priority as the one in the five. So I'm not as concerned with my image quite as much. Whereas if I led with two or I led with three or I led with four, I'd be very, very concerned with how people see me how I dress, how I express myself, how do I not express myself, how do I look in a situation, uh, how is this person seeing me, how do I want to be seen, uh, what, am I being authentic or not, am I feeling shame or not, uh, all these things will, will matter. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I think for me, I don't know my tri-type, but I know definitely I'm a, I am have Enneagram 4 um, in my main um, Enneagram because I am very concerned with being seen as, I guess like maybe not like, yeah, actually I do. Uh, I want people who like, who know me to kind of see what is different about me, like not necessarily that I'm better, but more like what is different about me compared to other people. Like I'm, I'm very concerned mm -hmm. with being an individual and, and um, if I'm in an environment that doesn't allow me to act myself, like maybe they expect me to be a different way and it kind of is very different from my authentic self, then I would distance myself from it um, after a while because it will feel like I'm putting up an act and mm. I'm really like against putting up an act for a very long time. And that's, I think that's also why I'm drawn to the arts because that's where, you know, a lot of Enneagram 4 types 
or people with NRM4 in, in their um, main type are very drawn to the arts. And mm. that's like my main, I guess, my main passion, where my main passion lies. Yeah. Yeah. I want. I do want to say though, that any type can be an artist or draw to the arts, but yes, the four is very the most concerned with being an artistic person, being involved yeah. in the in yeah. the arts or in music or in acting or poetry, expressing themselves in some way, expressing their feelings. Uh, although it's also about it's about authenticity, but it's more about the image of being an authentic person. The four can sort of fixate on certain feelings and say that these feelings are more authentic than others. The four can almost put the they they think they're owning their shadow, but they're actually just putting what everyone else puts in their sh what everyone else uh, puts forward goes into their shadow and what goes into everyone else's shadow they put forward. There could be a trap of like inverting authenticity. Oh it's like inverting the shadow. It's like a uh, so they may look at a type two and think, uh, oh, you're put on this positive front or you're being very kind and generous, but you're, I can see that you're uh, resentful, you're not taking care of yourself or you're angry, but you're not admitting to it, all these things. And the four will be more ready to say, I'm owning that, so on. And the four is owning that, but they can be denying the other side that the two has. So there's a very complex relationship going on here. Uh, but most fours will see themselves as someone who owns their shadow, whether that's true or not, and they'll see themselves as someone who is authentic and ex and emotionally honest, and they'll want other people to be emotionally honest as well as they see it. Uh, fours do need to learn, if they get into Enneagram, they do need to learn that uh, everyone is being authentic in their own way. Like, yeah. uh, so that can be a growing edge for them. And also two, three, and four, they're all competitive in a way in regarding, and they all kind of issues with jealousy and envy in their own way uh, mm -hmm. because they're almost like competing. If you focus a lot on image, you want your image to be a little bit better than someone else. The two wants to be a little bit more helpful than other yeah. helpful people. The three wants to be a little bit more successful yeah. and efficient mm -hmm. than other people. And the four wants to be a little bit more authentic and expressive and unique than other fours and so on, or other people. Yeah. And when you get to the head center, are you going to say something? Uh, what 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 are some of the tri types that uh, anagram four can have? Okay, like, so if, okay, so because it's your because it's a preference center, if you have four in your tri type, you cannot have two or three. So basically, the fours can be the four five one or four one five, which is one tri type. In a different order, uh, four six one four six uh, four one six four seven one four one seven. Uh, they can be the four five eight uh, forty five four six eight four eight six four seven eight four eight seven, and of course, uh, four five nine four nine five four six nine four six four nine six and four seven nine or four nine seven. And they all have their own names, and uh, the names are based on what the people in the interviews that Catherine Favre did, uh, what they were reporting. So, for example, the 146 tri type. So, the 146, 461, 614, they're all one tri type. They're called the philosopher because a lot of them were interested in philosophy or were studying philosophy. And they, had, but it's more like they attach themselves to a particular philosophy. So they may be a feminist or they may be a libertarian or they may be uh, this or that thing. Uh, and because of a big part of their life. Uh, so that's where that term came from. Whereas the three sex A talked a lot about justice and uh, fighting for justice and loyalty and so on and avenging personal injustice. So they're called the justice fighter. Other types were concerned with justice as well. They just talked about it a little bit more than the others. So yeah, so that's where that comes from. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm just gonna read out more on this because um, it's pretty interesting how like the yeah. tritype can affect your, I guess, um, like 
your how you behave and your priorities. Um, so once again, thank you so much, Jonathan, for um, being very insightful. And I think it's like a new thing that we are talking about here because a lot of people are not aware of the tri-type theory and how um, different tri-types can, you know, affect your, your how you see other people. So um, thank you for joining in the video. And um, I will also put the link, I think, of the... Um, Catherine, Catherine's link. Yes. Below, uh, the, the one who is uh, your. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Bye. Right. Bye.